So we are continuing our series this morning that we have called Transformed, How God Changes Us. And we're looking at seven key areas of life and looking at some of God's principles from his word that when applied to our life in these seven key areas uh, can help us be healthy in these areas of our life. Because God desires for us to be healthy. (laughs) All right. So... Now you can put that picture up. Anyone know this guy? Yes, this is uh, Dr. Spock, Mr. Spock. We have some Star Trek fans. Um, I am a Star Wars fan, predominantly, but I'm not opposed to Star Trek. I have nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with Star Trek. Um, I did, when I was a kid, I watched the original series. My dad uh, had a whole bunch of VHS tapes. I think he got them from, like, Columbia House or one of those sorts of things. They just sent them to us, and... So I, I, I watched the, the original series. Um, Spock, you know, a Vulcan, a very stoic being. This was sort of characteristic of the Vulcans, is that they, um, they're very, uh, you know, everything's about logic and reason, and they're essentially emotionless. Now, you might know some people that are like Spock <laughs> in that sense, but the truth is when God made us, He didn't design us to be like Spock. He didn't design us as these emotionless creatures. No, he gave us emotions. We feel stuff. So, first of all, I want to say don't feel bad about being emotional. That's okay. The human experience is an emotional experience, and that's a good thing. You can remove Spock there. Um, But we do need to use caution around our emotions, because our emotions are often unreliable. We might feel a certain way about something. We might feel strongly about something. We have very strong passions about something, but that doesn't mean we're right just because we feel strongly about it. Last week, uh, I, we said, don't believe everything you think, and today I want to say, don't accept everything you feel. In Proverbs 14, verse 12, it says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. There's a way that seems right to a man or a woman, but in the end, it leads to death. Sometimes we think, yeah, this seems right. This seems like the right thing to do. This feels good. This feels right. But we're not always right. Our emotions need a reality check. Our emotions are not always grounded in truth. We're also susceptible to emotional manipulation. Advertising is a good example of that. There's a multi-billion dollar advertising industry designed to manipulate your emotions in order to make you do or buy things that you otherwise wouldn't do or buy. And sometimes we allow our emotions to get the best of us. Sometimes, you know, we're overtaken by uh, feelings of anger and we lash out, or grief and we become hopeless, or pride and we become conceited and selfish or whatever it may be. I would say that not all emotional responses are sin, of course, but if we don't learn to manage our emotional responses, we can very easily be drawn into sin as a result of our emotions if we don't have any guards on them, if we don't have any caution or self-control. So we have to be careful about our emotions. Um, you might have seen maybe crocheted onto a pillow or, or, or put on someone's wall of their house this phrase, follow your heart, right? You hear that phrase sometimes, follow your heart, you know, and, and it's, oh, that sounds nice. But I would say that's really not good advice. <laughs> really? Follow your heart? Listen to what the scripture says in Jeremiah 17. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Don't follow your heart. Your heart can fool you. Your heart is sick with sin. Maybe following your heart or what feels right or what seems good to you isn't necessarily the best advice. Don't follow your heart. Lead your heart. Direct your heart. Allow Jesus to direct your heart. What we're really talking about here is, I said it earlier, self-control. Self-control. Proverbs 25, verse 28, I like this. It says, a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Mm. Your your guards are down. 
You got no self-control. You are susceptible to all sorts of attacks. Uh, I can remember uh, when we were kids, we got a puppy. And we had a few dogs over the years, but this one was special. It was a part uh, Doberman, and we named him Duke. And we brought home Duke, and Duke was great. You know, he, he was... Uh, a bit of a wild puppy. After, after a, a little bit of time, we realized as well that Duke uh, wasn't a, a duke after all, was a, more of a duchess. Um, uh, we, and so we renamed Duke Dukey. So Duke became Dukey. Um, but like most puppies, was, you know, hyper and, uh, and, and, and he would jump up and on all that sort of stuff. She needed to be tamed. So dad trained her and uh, over time, through training, she learned to obey, and she became a really great dog. She was actually the best dog I think we had growing up, and and she was so tame. I mean, we lived right. In, my parents still live there, and right in the center of the town of Aylesford, if you can call it a town. Really, it's an intersection. But anyway, they live right there, <laughs> and uh, it's busy, and uh, and and Duke Dukey would just sit on the the front uh, veranda of the house. And no leash, no nothing, and, and, and cars would go by, and people would walk by, and people with dogs would walk by, and she'd just lift her head and watch them and put her head back down, and, and no bark, no nuts. So she was a really, really uh, tame dog. But that wasn't something that came naturally to her. She had to be trained to have that kind of self-control. And we are the same way. We are the same way. We need to train to be self-controlled. Uh, instead of being led by our emotions, instead of reacting in, in, in uncontrollable ways, we need to learn to manage our emotions instead of allowing our emotions to manage us. Now, here's the thing. You can't do this alone. You, you can't do it by willpower. And that's part of the problem. Uh, we need the Lord's help with this. And we need his word to direct us in how to get better at this. In home churches this week, uh, the study is going to uh, look at how to, how to heal damaged emotions. That's going to be part of, of this going a little bit deeper. But this morning, I want to ask, uh, how, do, how do we begin to manage our emotions? And how, the question is how to deal with how you feel. How to deal with how you feel. Four points. Four points. The first point is this. If I'm going to have self-control... If I am going to manage my emotions well and have guardrails and use caution and all those sorts of things so I don't fly off the handle and all, the, all that sort of thing, the first thing is that I must bring my feelings to the Father. I must bring my feelings to the Father. Proverbs chapter 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. That's a great verse that you should memorize. It's really good. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Julia's dad has a little plaque, and he used to keep it by his computer. I don't know if he still does, but uh, it just just said, have you prayed about it? (laughs) Have you prayed about it? Have you stopped to acknowledge God in the midst of what you're feeling? One of my favorite verses uh, says, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. It's a simple concept, really. Convert your emotions, convert your concerns and your worries and your fears and your anxieties into prayers. That's, that's really good. But in order to do that, in order to bring our feelings to the Father, we have to recognize what we're feeling. We have to be able to identify it, to name it, in order for us to be able to bring it to the Father. You have to have a certain amount of self-awareness. Um, some of you would know what, a, well, most of you would know what a check engine light is. You can put that graphic up, check engine light. This comes up once in a while in my car. And um, there's other little lights there too, and I, I only under, know but what half of them are. And so sometimes the thing will, will ding, and then I'll have to get, actually get the manual. Did you know that your car came with a user's manual? It does. <laughs> I've read it, I've looked at it a few times, and I, you know, I have to find out what these symbols mean, because I don't know what they mean. Um, So when you get one of these little lights and it dings, uh, what do you do? How do you, what do you do then? Do you, do you ignore it? Do you do something about it? Um, When destructive emotions start arising in your life, 
when destructive emotions start arising in your life, you start getting bitter. That's a little ding, that's a little check engine light. Ding, hmm, why am I feeling this way? Or I'm feeling anxious, ding. You know, I'm feeling angry, ding. I'm feeling jealous, ding. Do you, when you have these little dings, these little check engine lights, and you start to realize, oh, I'm feeling certain ways, do you ignore those feelings? Do you ignore that, or do you try to identify it and deal with it? Now, if it's your car, hopefully you would stop and, and take it to Russell or to someone else, and, and they plug a little thing into the car's computer, and, and they'll diagnose the problem. And, they, and then they can hopefully fix it. But before it can be fixed, it has to be identified and diagnosed. So an important first step for us to be able to manage our emotions is, is that, is to identify it. When you start to have those feelings, those unhealthy emotions, when you're reacting in ways that are, you know, unexpected, or, or you know, those, when those dashboard lights start going off, Stop. Pause, reflect, think about what is happening. What am I feeling right now? What am I really feeling right now? What's going on? Ask God to help you understand. In Psalm 26, verse 2, it says, Examine me, O Lord, and test me. Evaluate my inner thoughts and motives. Help me, God. God, run a diagnostic on my system. And then ask him to give you what you need in that moment. So, first thing... An important step in managing your emotions is bringing those, your feelings to the Father in order to do that to identify what they are. So stop and pray and bring your feelings to the Father. Number two, I must follow Jesus instead of my feelings. In Matthew 16, Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Forever who would... For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. If I'm going to follow Jesus, I have to learn to deny myself. That means I have to deny my passions and urges that are not healthy, that are not what God wants for me. And we can be very tempted to act upon our feelings in ungodly ways to satisfy the flesh. We have to begin to train ourselves to deny ourselves so that we can act in ways that honor and imitate Jesus rather than ways that lead us down a path of sin and destruction. Some examples. Let's say you're feeling angry. So what are you going to do about it? You know, anger itself is not necessarily a sin, but what are you going to do as a result of your anger? You can make sinful choices as a result of your anger, or you can make healthy choices as a response to that emotion. If you're following your feelings, you may do something that you regret. You might choose to get back at someone, do something nasty to them uh, to make them realize how angry you are. Or you might take out your anger on someone else in some other way. Uh, if you're following Jesus instead of your feelings and you're focused on that, how are you going to respond to that anger? Well, you may choose uh, to channel that anger in healthy ways and in, into fighting injustice. You may choose to think before you speak. Uh, you may choose to forgive the one who is angering you or be patient and so on. Following Jesus instead of your feelings. What if you're feeling guilty? Well, if you're following your feelings, you may choose to wallow in self-hatred. Or you may get discouraged or even depressed. You might give up or to the worst extreme, you might harm yourself. If you're following Jesus instead of your feelings, you may choose to confess, bring it to the Lord, and ask him to forgive you, and set you free from those feelings of guilt and shame. Maybe you're feeling jealous. Well, if you're following your feelings, how are you going to respond to that feelings of jealousy? Well, you, you may live with in unhappiness and discontentment. Or maybe you're going to work harder and harder and harder and work yourself to death so that you can have what the neighbors have, so you can keep up with the Kardashians or the Joneses or whoever you want to keep up with. 
or do some other unwise or unhealthy thing that is not what God wants for you so you can try and satisfy your perceived need. But what if you're following Jesus? You're feeling jealous, but you're really following Jesus. You're really a disciple. You're really, you know, focused on that discipleship to Christ. Instead of your feelings, you feel, you're starting to feel jealous. Maybe you're going to convert that into celebrating what God is doing in this other person's life. Hey, praise God for the fact that they're able to buy that nice car. That's all right. That's good. I don't have that, but that's okay. I got my K car and I'm happy, right? It's a nice reliant automobile. <laughs> so whenever you're, whatever is the feeling is, is being stirred up in, inside of you and you're, you think, you got to think, you know, how would Jesus react in this situation? What would Jesus do? And that takes training. It takes training. How do we train ourselves to be Christ-like in these emotional moments? <clears throat> well, a big component is staying connected to Scripture. Staying connected to Scripture is so key. The other morning, as an example, I, you know, I woke up, and, and the, almost immediately, I had a negative thought about a person <clears throat> who, was, I, who I've been frustrated with lately. <clears throat> Not my wife, by the way. Someone else. <laughs> um, she's great. Um, but before I go to bed, I, I've been training myself to, uh, to read the verse of the day before I get out of bed in the morning. So that's, I did that. Very first thing, I grabbed my phone and I opened up the Bible app and I read the verse of the day. And the verse of the day said, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. I thought, oh, yeah, all right, that's for me. That's for me. And it was really helpful for me in that moment. It kind of set my day in the right direction. <clears throat> in Psalm 119, 11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I need to make God's word my word. Ooh, this paper got all weird. Wow. And in fact... The whole top half is didn't print. <laughs> what am I going to say? Oh. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is this. You need to know God's word. You need to memorize God's word. You need to read God's word. You need to study God's word. I had a roommate one time uh, who, uh, he literally took a Sharpie and wrote scripture verses on the doorposts of our house. He took that scripture in Deuteronomy a little too serious. He said, write the... Words, the word of God on the doorposts of your home. He literally did that with a Sharpie, and our landlord wasn't all that impressed with it. Um, but anyways, these reminders, these visual reminders, maybe post something on your, post scripture verses on your fridge, whatever it might be. Um, we got to get God's word into our hearts and into our minds. That's going to help us follow Jesus instead of following our feelings when we're in these situations. So if I'm going to follow Jesus, instead of following my heart or my emotions, I need to keep his word in my mind. I need to be able to recall the truth and allow that to speak into my life. Okay, so if I'm going to manage my emotions well, number one is I need to, I must what? Do you remember? I must bring my feelings to the Father, right? Identify it and bring it to the Father. And number two, I must uh, follow Jesus instead of my feelings. So I need to have God's word in my mind. I need to be connected to Christ, be thinking about what would Jesus do, all those sort of things. And the third thing is this, and this is really important. I must rely on the work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that we are to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Romans 6, 1 Peter 5, Ephesians 5. Not by our emotions. This is an example in Ephesians 5. It says, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. You know, there's this category over here, drunkenness, uncontrollable, lack of self-control, making poor decisions, and then the, op the, other, the other option is be filled with the Spirit. Don't be filled with spirits, be filled with the Spirit. Okay? Um, I, need the, to, the seek, I need to seek the Spirit of God daily. I need to invite God to fill me with His Spirit. And you know what will happen when we do that, when we ask God, we're intentional about saying, God, fill me with your spirit every day. Say, Lord, guide me by your spirit. Fill me with your spirit today. Uh, I, I want to be led and directed entirely by your Holy Spirit. You know what will happen? 
the fruit of the Spirit will begin to grow in your life. In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, uh, it lays out what the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. That is the evidence, the result of the Spirit having more control in my life. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. Here it is. Love, joy, peace, patience. Do you need that one sometimes? I, I sure do. Patience, kindness. You ever find yourself being mean, nasty, or rude to people, to your spouse, to your kids, the people that you work with, to people in your class, to people on Twitter? You ever find yourself wanting to make nasty comments or be snarky? I do sometimes, let's be honest. The Spirit doesn't make us unkind. That's not the Spirit at work within us, if that's you. The Spirit makes us kind. Kindness is one of the fruit of the Spirit. What else? Goodness. Goodness, holiness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruit of the Spirit. Self-control comes from God-control. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is so much better than being filled with anger, worry, fear, guilt, shame, jealousy, bitterness, and so on. Are you filled with the Spirit? You know, a good way to know is um, the squeeze test. When you squeeze a tube of toothpaste, what comes out? Toothpaste comes out. When you squeeze a bottle of ketchup, what comes out? Ketchup comes out. When you're squeezed, what comes out of you? Whatever is inside of you is what's going to come out of you when you're squeezed, when you're under pressure. If you're full of anger, and stress, and worry, and fear, and guilt, and shame, and jealousy, and greed, that's what's going to come out of you when you're under pressure. But if you're full of the Holy Spirit... What's going to come out of you when you're under pressure? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you've got nasty stuff coming out of your life, I'd encourage you to spend some time each day prayerfully asking the Lord to fill you with his spirit. Maybe that's a big part of the problem. Seek him and you will find him. So we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. We have to be filled with the Spirit to help us manage our emotions. In Zechariah 4, 6, it says, You will not succeed by your own strength or power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. If I'm going to manage my emotions, I must rely on the Holy Spirit. And number four, if I'm going to manage my emotions well, I need to invite others to help me. I need to invite others to help me. Maybe you need to go get some counseling. Maybe you need to go to a therapist. You know what? That's a good thing. That's a really good thing. That can be a really, really good decision for you. Don't be afraid of that. It doesn't mean that you're, there's anything wrong with you. In fact, maybe it shows that there's something good right with you if you're making that decision to go to a counselor. And we're blessed to have Brian Schrock here this morning and Paula Weaver as well from Archway. So if you, need some, if you were looking for some Christian counseling, I can encourage you and, uh, and recommend, I give my full recommendation, endorsement to Archway Counseling. Uh, maybe you need a mentor in your life. In Titus chapter 2 says the older women should teach the younger women and the older men should teach the younger men. It actually says they should urge the younger men to be self-controlled is what it says specifically. I think that's interesting language. Mentors. Man, if you don't have a mentor, I encourage you. Seek someone out. Ask someone. Ask an older Christian who you admire and say, hey, would you mentor me? I need help. I did that. I did that a couple years ago. And I reached out to a a pastor who I admire and respect. And I said, you know what? I got problems in my life and I don't know how to solve them on my own. Can you help me? And he said, I'd love to. And we meet just about every month. And uh, it's been one of the most important things in my life. Uh, Reach out to your pastor. Hey, I'm here. Uh, Hannah's here. We're available for you. 
Um, even a close friend. Maybe, maybe uh, you've, you've got a close friend and, and you need to give them permission to speak into your life. You need to give them permission to tell you hard truth. You need to give them permission to slap you upside the head once in a while when you need it. <laughs> As a person uh, who has tried many times unsuccessfully to make changes in my life, I can testify that most of the time, real lasting transformation in any of these key areas of your life is going to be more likely when you have someone on the journey with you, keeping you accountable and cheering you along. That principle is true for your emotional health as well as your physical health, your spiritual health, your mental health, and so on. All right, so what are the four key principles for managing my emotions? I must bring my feelings to the Father, follow Jesus instead of my feelings, rely on the work of the Holy Spirit, and invite others to help me. God wants us to, to love him, not only with all of our strength and all of our mind, but also with all of our heart. He wants us to love him with all of our heart, Jesus said. And he made us emotional beings. We're not Dr. Spock, and that's a good thing. We are emotional beings, but he wants our emotions to honor him. He wants us to be self-controlled. So don't follow your heart, lead your heart, and invite Jesus to be the king of your heart. Worship team, can you come, please? We're going to close with a song conveniently titled, Can You Believe This King of My Heart? Wow, what are the chances that that would work out like that? Um, and I want to read this last passage of scripture, Titus 2. Titus 2, verses 11 to 14, says this. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. And the last word I will say is that if you've never turned your life over to Jesus in faith to save you, that's always, 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 in all of these seven key areas of life, that's step one. Trust in Jesus today. Don't delay.